temples of aesthetic appreciation. But today's art galleries are all about collecting an experience. Created by a brand name artist, whose work can only be purchased by people with elite wealth. Even so, the penniless chumps like you and I keep lining up to collect our selfies with the celebrity artwork. So if it wasn't for this, why were art galleries invented? In the beginning, there was art. Then, there was religious art. Then, art academies. Then, art galleries. Art dealers, art auctions, art prizes, art press, art critics, art curators, art advisors, art fairs, biennales, corporate sponsorship, till eventually it became very difficult to find the art in the art world. Hello, Internet. My name is Peter, and I am a genuine art critic. I'm here by these dumpsters because in today's art world, anything can be art. And so the art critic is obsolete. But it wasn't always this way. In this, our first episode, I'd like to show you how we got into this mess, beginning with the story of how art galleries were invented. If you wanted to look at some art 300 years ago, you had just a few options. If you were rich, you could go to a salon or look at the private collection of one of your rich friends. But if you were poor, you could go to a church. But in 1793, at the peak of the French Revolution, that all started to change, when the Louvre became the world's first national public art gallery. Anyone could visit the Louvre, and the collection became the property of the people of France. These days, every capital city in the world has a public art gallery. But in 1793, they were a completely new idea. So what was that idea exactly? Well, that question goes right to the core of our contemporary understanding of art. In 1793, when the Louvre opened, the idea of art was going through enormous changes. Traditionally, art has fulfilled a few key roles. Art can be used to explain the world, it can explain the world through religion, and it can be a luxury commodity. But in 1793, Enlightenment thinking was diminishing the role of the church, and the influence of religion in art was shrinking. It seemed as though art in the future might just be a luxury, a plaything used to flatter the egos of Europe's elites. Then suddenly, a new idea arose, to make art into its very own religion, a spiritual system of pure aesthetic contemplation. Genius artists would be its prophets, all that was needed was a place of worship, and with that, the art gallery was invented. It all started three years before the public opening of the Louvre, when the philosopher Immanuel Kant formalised the idea that art could convey its own form of truth without any religious dogma. All that was necessary was a place for the ascetic contemplation of art. Suddenly, art was a source of its own spiritual worth and national identity. Any serious nation should have serious art and a serious gallery to display it. For the next 200 years, people really believed that art galleries, just like libraries, could make you into a better person. The spiritual truth of art would seep into your soul just by having it near you. Few people really believe that anymore. After 200 years of questioning the spiritual core of art, we've come to realise that it probably doesn't exist. What surely does exist is luxury, entertainment and the easily exploitable desire for spiritual truth. The problem is that those three things can be satisfied without art. Today we've never had so much luxury, entertainment and the promise of spiritual truth that every few minutes something appears in our news feed which seems to be offering us all three. Perhaps you think that I'm suggesting that we get rid of art galleries, but I'm not. The real question is, should we still respect art galleries the way that we used to now that their role has changed? And that is the question that I'm going to leave with you. Give me your best answer and I'll give you my best response in my